Welcome back to another edition of Solved. Today we are working on a 2019 Honda Insight. We'll be doing the front and rear brakes. Now the front brakes aren't yet available other than through Honda. That's the part number that you're gonna need. I think it was around 60 bucks with the tax. But it does come with all the hardware, clips, everything you see here. These are your old ones. And then obviously on the right, you see your new ones. And they are specific. So you can't be putting that over here because the spring clip has to be on the outside, which is helpful because when I disassembled it, uh, one of these, this one right here, uh, actually came apart. So I guess they're like tack welded or something when they're made. Uh, so very important that you get new hardware when you're replacing the pads. Uh, I have yet to see aftermarket available again through Honda, 60 bucks at your local Honda dealership. So here I already took the liberty of getting the wheel off. You have your set screw, which is right here. Uh, usually it is a Phillips head. Looks just like this. And I forgot my impact driver tool today. So what I did was I engineered it with a Milwaukee, looks like a number one Phillips head. I can't tell, I can't read that small writing. Anyway, uh, as you see, I have it with the vice grip here. You put it there and use a hammer while you're turning it uh, counterclockwise, lefty loosey of course and that gets the set screw out. Otherwise, I do highly recommend you get an impact driver. They're pretty cheap at uh, online or Harbor Freight. Uh, I, my snap one I think was like a hundred something dollars, but uh, I use it almost every day, so I don't mind spending the extra dough because quality is in the product. Uh, any event, we have the caliper bolts which come off of the bracket right here, which are 12 millimeter right there and then you have your 17 millimeter for the bracket to the steering knuckle or hub assembly next the rotor comes off pretty cooperatively and just do it in reverse and this is the passenger front we'll be doing a brake bleed uh, on all four wheels afterwards and I'll just give you a little bit of a preview of the rear this uh, funky looking thing here is actually the electronic brake um, it, it applies the emergency brake or parking brake electronically uh, automatically if you will and then I believe the rest of the caliper is gonna be straightforward but we'll get to that as soon as we're done with the front all right so I'm getting ready to put on the pads which if you look close enough this is factory original Aki Bono so you're getting a quality product for not much more than they would charge in the big box stores uh, the nicest thing is how awesome these shims just fit into place you don't need the kind with the sticky tabs or nothing and then this is your inboard also Aki Bono as you have the sensor I always like to put the pads with the sensors on the inboard but some people have their own personal preference so we get that on there and we have all our new clips there and you just slide them in see how cooperative this is gonna go I only have the bracket bolts thread hand threaded in yeah I'm gonna need two hands be right back. okay so I got these on the brake pads that is what I wound up doing is I wound up tightening the bracket with the 217 millimeters make sure you hang your caliper properly so that doesn't happen now the reason why I'm showing you this part under microscope because the way this hooks in I have to show you on another brake pad here if you look at the ear let me see if I can do it against here okay so the ear right there see that notch that notch goes right behind the pad so when you articulate the pad in such a fashion to get it on you see how that they're spaced away automatically it's like they're being pulled away from the rotor to ex uh, allow cooling and extend the life of the pads and the rotors to eliminate a lot of the heat dissipation that happens. So when the caliper is on, it's gonna be mounted like this, but it's gonna be ever so slightly away, probably micro increments, to allow a cooling of the pads, and that's how you'll probably get better 
braking out of the whole thing because of a cooler rotor with more air passing through it definitely gives uh, a quicker stopping time anyway that's just the uh, technical stuff I just thought it was important to show you here the clip did actually come off and I was able to rebuild it so give me a moment I'll get one and I'll sample that for you how to do it in case you don't know uh, if it happens to you. okay so in case this happens to you as it happened to me you see on the left you see that the stay clip is off of the hardware itself and then the one on the right is assembled so the way we do this is that's when I need another person uh, <laughs> so we'll take let me see if I can get a good angle here so this tab right there on the end right there you see the little hook down okay that goes in this hole right here okay so it goes in there like that hope I'm doing a good job I'm just under a tree right now let me move to a better spot where there's plenty of light okay so we got that hole that you see right there and then this goes here then the roundabout I'm gonna have to do this with two hands basically this part right here has to go under that little clip that tab right there see that tab and then it'll go around from there let me see if I can prop this up in such a way no I'm gonna have to try to do this one-handed folks so this clip will go come on like that see I hope you caught that I wasn't watching the camera and then you see it's back reassembled so again just to take it out no problem put in that hole bend it around goes in that tab and then it'll walk itself around okay back to the brake okay so now we're over here in the rear brakes and you have an H7 here and an H7 right there you have these two little black plastic covers keeps dirt and moisture out and of course you have your stay clip which goes right there forgot to press record while I was doing that so we're gonna take that off H7 H7 there will be right okay so in the rear brakes you're gonna need a kit like this something similar like that it has discs you can see on the caliper piston there are two notches there and uh, you just got to find the right combination which one works these are two-sided and then use this this is usually a 916 here this is usually a one inch um, yeah not metrics going old school SAE and you'll set that I'll set that up for you to see what it looks like and we'll take care of it and then just so you can see what I meant by H7 it's basically a hexagon or Allen key some people call it uh, I use it on a socket and it is marked as a H seven or seven millimeter excuse me seven millimeter that's basically all it means I don't know if that shows it uh, all right I'm gonna get that set up for you all right so that's what it looks like once it's set up you can see the space of the disc that I chose was actually this one and we're gonna get the one inch here the 916 here the 916 goes clockwise the one inch goes counterclockwise at a different speed I won't be able to show you because it does take two hands to use it um, I'll try my best if I can at least we'll get a few uh, turns in and then you'll see the piston going back all right so the setup I actually went with was a uh, snap-on ratcheting 916 uh, that way it's just easier for me to do while I'm holding the camera and as you can see I didn't use the one inch because it would be very very difficult to hold on to and the camera at the same time so basically you just hold it like this <laughs> supposed to go the other way okay but as you turn the 916 this is going to loosen that's why you need two hands because this has to go like this this has to go counterclockwise while this one goes clockwise and this one is a slow at a faster speed while this one's at a slower speed uh, so that otherwise you're going to lose the contact point here and here and then you're going to the disc is going to fall off the piston and then you're going to be frustrated and you're going to reset it and it's a real pain in the dick when you got to do that shit so uh let's try and get that done see here with one hand let's see am I nope I lost the 916s oh it's right here sorry folks I'm doing my best to get this video for you okay so, so you can see the piston turning right there now you want to get a little bit more contact over here where the vice grip is 
Oh, see, now I lost contact. I gotta do this with one hand, but you get the basic idea. Okay, so I reset it, and just to show you, as I was saying, what a pain in the ass it was. Um, this popped off of here. Uh, see, even just to show you. So this popped off here, then I had to take this off, had to reset it, uh, had to make sure that the pins are on the disc are inside the caliper piston. It, it's just not worth it. Um, it'd be worth it if I had a headset or something, but sorry, this is all I got. Uh, I'm gonna continue putting other, looks like the piston's almost all the way back. And then, let's see if I can get it. And you'll know when it's fully back because it'll stop. Yep, there we go. So, success. I was able to do it one hand. Sorry about all the cussing, uh, but you know, that's part of the job sometimes. You just get a little frustrated. And then now you just uh, back this off. As you can see here, that comes off easy there. It's a little messed up because I'm doing it one-handed. And that's it. So now you can see that the caliper piston is now flush right here, which is what you want. And even though this is electronic here, I contacted Honda just to make sure. They said it you treat it like normal brakes, nothing over the top. All right, and that's for the rear brakes. Okay, so we got the new rotor on. Calipers all set. The caliper brackets, bolts rather, are 17 millimeter. You got two of those. Now that we got the bracket on, I want to take note here. You want to put a little lube on these points right here so that the threads stay nice and lubricated. Of course, you always want to lube the inside of the pin or slide. Uh, and take note that there are no hardware pieces like the front. The pads, they just slip right on there, which I'll show you in a moment. So you do get a hardware pack with the gold series level. Uh, these are aftermarket brake pads uh, from uh, AutoZone. And as you can see, they're very good quality here. The sensor, again, I always like it on the back and the bottom. And here's your pad and shim already assembled. And then this is the only hardware you need since uh, it does come with other clips, but that only, uh, that isn't applicable for this job. Okay, that one's on in the back. And that's all it is on the front. Remember, there's no need to get all Michelangelo on this. Just a little bit of lube in there and there, and then we're gonna take those slides out and we're gonna lube those as well. Okay, so now with the caliper reassembled, you see what I do is I put most of the grease at the tip right there, so that way when it goes in, it's just gonna drag throughout the whole rubber component inside, and it's just gonna lubricate everything. Remember, you need a uh, seven millimeter or H7 socket, unless you wanna do it by hand which I do not like doing by hand. And I would recommend by hand at least threading in these two bolts because it is very easy to cross thread them and then you're up, you know what, creek. Good old measurement, good and tight. And of course we have the stay clip, which I like to do on the bottom first. Then you pop it in a hole there or negotiate it underneath the tab. Now I usually use two hands. Let's see if we can do it one-handed. We can do it. Before you achieve, you must believe. Good enough for me. That's actually the way it's supposed to be. Get your new pads in there. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Another edition of Solved. I won't bore you with doing the driver's side. You obviously know what you need to do then. Just repeat. And uh, of course I already put the set screw back in here. This is only from the factory. Uh, they do that so that the rotor stays up against the hub in place nice and flat and even so they can re so that they can assemble all the other brake components onto it. Uh, when it comes to the brake bleeding sequence, I won't bore you with that. I will tell you that it's always starting from, unless the manufacturer provides um, a, a different dynamic or a process on how to do it, uh, you always want to start in the passenger rear, go to the driver's rear, passenger front, and then driver's front like the letter Z but you're starting at the end of the Z and uh, top off your master make sure it's at the proper level and thanks again for watching solved any questions comments don't forget to like subscribe share this with a friend uh, when I contacted the dealer for the brake pads they told me I was the first one that they ever sold a set of brake pads to from the dealer for the 2019 Honda Insight uh, thanks again for watching and tune in for the next video for another edition of soft